there. It's good to have you with us today for another informative edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Twyla Whelan. We're in the hurricane season when storms of varying intensity can develop at any time, posing a risk to your life and possessions. Thankfully, we do have weather experts to alert us once a system forms and becomes a threat to our island, which means you have time to prepare. It's never too late, but the earlier the better. That's our focus today. Please stay with us as we provide some important guides to get you through this hurricane season safely. I am Adrian Atkinson and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, July 3, 2024. Persons needing critical health care are being urged to seek accommodation as near to a hospital as possible. The call is being made by Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa mckenzie In terms of mothers making sure who are about to deliver within the last month of um, their pregnancy to ensure that they're near to delivery sites so that they won't have problems getting to a delivery site in case they go into labor. For all persons who have chronic diseases to ensure that they have their medications on hand and um, just to ensure the public, other public health announcements in terms of water safety and food safety, we're asking the public to pay attention to these as we will continue to be put, to put these out over the next couple of days. Dr. Bisesa McKenzie says the Regional Emergency Operation Committee's EOCs will be fully activated after passing of hurricane burial to coordinate response with the national EOC. Post-disaster, we will have general assessment of service and of course this is when our environmental health unit really kicks in in terms of water safety and food safety and shelter management and then of course the urgency to restart essential services that we will try to commence as soon as possible and then we will have our communication updates to inform the public as to what is happening as the time passes. Thank you. Since yesterday, all public hospitals have entered emergency mode. This means that while the hospitals remain open, all patient services and elective surgeries are suspended and visitations will be limited. Additionally, the Jamaica Cuba Eye Care Program is suspended until further notice. The Ministry of Labor and Social Security is assuring that welfare measures have been coordinated to do things such as damage assessments and the delivery of care packages once burial has passed. Portfolio Minister Pernell Charles Jr. says the team has been activated since Saturday doing the necessary audits. Now our team has been activated. Uh, PS and team have been meeting uh, from Friday, Saturday to ensure that we do the necessary audits um, we um, have audited in terms of ensuring we have food packages, hygiene kits. Uh, we are now on the way in terms of preparing more while we watch and monitor to ensure that in a staggered approach uh, we are ready to supply as necessary. Minister Charles Jr. says measures are in place to distribute supplies across the island. As we are the ministry with our social workers that will be out that we're ready in terms of transportation and communication. Our motor vehicles are ready, gas is in place, new vehicles have been deployed, um, actions have been taken to ensure that all phones are ready and connected, um, and that our team is ready uh, to stay engaged on the ground across all 14 parishes. Commissioner of the Jamaica Fire Brigade, Stuart Beckford, is urging persons to exercise caution when using candles and generators during the hurricane. If you are using candles, make sure that you put them in a container with water hmm, so that when it burns, um, it will extinguish itself. Uh, keep them away from flammable materials such as curtains and, of course, tablecloth. Uh, if you are using generators, please ensure that these are not in your house. Carbon monoxide poisoning is something that 
is real and carbon monoxide will kill and kill you in a jiffy. Mr. Stewart reiterates the importance of personal safety as he encourages citizens to heed all hurricane warnings and evacuate from flood prone areas. But I want to use this opportunity to encourage Jamaicans where there are um, warnings to evacuate flood prone areas that you heed these warnings because while we'll risk a lot to save savable lives, um, lives um, it's going to be difficult for us to commit to our firefighters in situations where the risk to them eh, outweighs the benefits. So please adhere to those warnings that will be issued by ADPEM and other state agencies. And finally, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade says it is in contact with other countries within the region that are being impacted by hurricane burial to determine the level of support needed for Jamaican nationals. Portfolio Minister Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith gave the update at an emergency press briefing on Monday. Our heads of mission across the region are in touch. In fact, all our heads of mission have been activated at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. We're in touch also with the diplomatic corps, and a group has been set up very efficiently by the PS with the head of the UN, head of the ISA, and the head of um, at the dean of the diplomatic corps to ensure that we are able to just share information very quickly. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thank you so much for watching. Primary school, churches, community centers. Know your nearest emergency shelter. Protect your family during any natural disaster. Be prepared. Visit the ODPEM website at odpem.org.jm to find the shelter listing for your parish. Know your emergency shelters. Thanks for staying with us. It's better to be safe than sorry is a proverb we often live by and it takes on added significance in times like these. Question, if a hurricane strikes with ferocious intensity and your home becomes unsafe, do you know where you could go for shelter? One of ODPEM's primary hurricane safety tips is to find out the location of the nearest shelter to your home and map out an evacuation route should it become necessary. Keep watching to find out how the government is ensuring these shelters are ready to keep you safe. We are now putting in place the necessary early warning systems in Port Maria new sophisticated early warning systems 15 systems have been put in place in port maria that will alert that town to any danger that is on the horizon the two telecommunication firms in the country confirm their commitments to work with the ADPEM to provide a messaging system for Jamaicans on their phones. You'll be able to get live notices on your phone. We would have already put in place all the necessary radios in their various locations. The Jamaica Fire Brigade, the police, every arm of government is equipped to communicate before and after. Our shelters will be fully activated and all that is required is for us to hope and pray that we are spared any major 
disaster this year. Throughout this program, the ADPEM seeks to ensure a constant stream of emergency supplies inclusive of relief items, emergency response supply items. These readily available response to emergencies and disasters such as flooding and earthquakes. Many schools are used as shelters and they should leave it when they, when they leave in the same condition that they would have gone into or better. So we take care of the facilities and ensure that we are leaving the schools in proper condition for our children who use it on a regular basis. In terms of taking care of our school plant, we have had you know, some experiences, negative experiences over the years, but we know that it is not the general desire of persons to destroy what is here. We just want to remind you, however, that we need our plant to be available for our children after the disaster would have passed. So if you do come, we are, of course, expecting that you are going to treat it as you would treat your own home. It would be unfortunate if the shelter managers are forced to evict anyone for violating the protocols that is set. And you know, let me be frank with you right now, it's time now we become more responsible. So I am expecting that one, nobody will attempt to cook in the shelters because that is not going to happen. This government since 2016 have made arrangements that once the shelters are occupied, we will provide food supplies for persons within the shelters. So the rules that are laid out are clear. It is written all over the board. I am pretty sure that the persons coming to the shelters will abide by these protocols. I, I have no doubt that they will. But if they break the rules, then the, the, the shelter managers have that responsibility to restore law and order. We will continue to keep the public abreast as to where um, will be the, the most vulnerable areas for us to uh, activate shelters. And those shelters uh, that are activated will also be published through our social media and the general media channels. One frightening feature of a storm is lightning. It can destroy appliances, cause fires, medical emergencies, or even death. If lightning affects someone close to you, do you know what to do? We have some answers. It is a very impressive geophysical phenomenon that produces the loudest light and the loudest sound. Um, as we know, it's very prevalent in the summer months and uh, for Jamaica that actually means that it's also pre prevalent in our hurricane season. It may cause direct effects or indirect effects and the direct effects are usually due to the effects of the current the indirect effects are the associated injuries that are involved. This may include multi-system injuries, neurological injuries, both immediate or delayed, burns, and depending on where you are and what happened in the middle of when you were struck by lightning, if you had trauma, you may have blunt trauma. And the blunt trauma may, as you can imagine, affect any system. are responding, um, we need to ensure that we have the chain of survival involved. Um, you need to get early, early response, you need to call for help, 
if it is that the person has had a cardiac or a respiratory arrest, we need to manage that early because you can resuscitate the patient. And typically, the individuals who are affected are young and those who do not have any cardiac problems. So with early resuscitation, you can get a positive outcome. And uh, this means the person does not have to die, right? In terms of the resuscitation, we're going to use this typical airway and cervical spine control. And I'm going to stress on this. Sometimes you have persons who have been struck by lightning and they have fallen. If they have fallen, they potentially have, and depending on how they fall, of course, you may have injury to your cervical spine. So we need to take care in, when, in terms of when we're resuscitating them and when we're moving them to ensure that the appropriate spinal immobilization techniques are there, borne in mind. If they're not breathing, we're going to have to breathe for them. If it is that we need to restart the heart because the heart has stopped, um, we can do this by chest co external chest compressions or by the use of a defibrillator and give it defibrillating the patient. Um, you may realize that there are quite a few ex automatic external defibrillators placed in strategic areas across the country. Um, they're relatively simple to operate and usually when you get your have an AED present, um, whoever has it, if you're trained to use it, I'm going to ask that if the situation requires, right, um, go ahead and do so as per instruction. You need to pay attention to the weather forecast. Um, we all know that the Meteorological Office of Jamaica issue weather forecasts. We really, really, really need to pay attention to them. If you hear thunder, you are in striking distance of lightning. If there's a thunderstorm, the safest place to be is within a well-constructed building, right? Away from water. So this is not the time that you really should be running pipes washing, having a bath, you need to be out of water. Water is a good conductor of electricity and it, if you are indoors in, and touching water, you may have a problem. You need to be stay away from electrical wires. You need to stay away from all electrical devices. If you are outdoor, the most dangerous place that you can find yourself in is at the highest point or at something beneath something or an object that will translate to be at the highest point. In other words, standing under a tree or a very tall tree is not the place for you to be in the middle of a lightning storm, right? Um, if you can move indoors, please do. If you are in a body of water, Remember, water is a very good conductor of electricity. You need to come out of the water, be pool, river, stream, any body of water. Stay away from water. If you happen to notice that your hair stands on ends, um, for a matter of speaking, the advice is to actually crouch down low as you can, go on your tippy toes, Cover your eyes and cover your ear lobes. Basically, curl up into a ball and on your tippy toes, right? So you're as low to the ground as possible with as little contact with the actual ground as, as possible. If you're in a vehicle, you need to roll the windows up. Do not touch the outer frame of the vehicle and uh, the vehicle should be grounded. The exception is a convertible. If you happen to be in a convertible, whether it's flat top, soft top, hard top, please come out of the convertible and find an appropriate area. It's not a good place to be. If you are a victim of lightning, please seek medical attention or if you observe somebody who is a victim of lightning, get medical attention to them, right? It is actually very safe to touch the victim. Call for help. The lightning victims can be revived using cardiopulmonary resuscitation. If you are trained in CPR, and that's cardiopulmonary resuscitation, and the situation is such where this is what is needed, go ahead. All right, but it's for the trained person. And with that, stay out of water, away from electrical wires, seek appropriate shelter, and 
listen to the Met Office. When you, the Met Office has issued a bulletin, take heed. Thunderstorms may have lightning with it. Severe weather in terms of um, that may come with the risk of lightning. If you hear thunder, lightning can strike you and you are in within striking distance. Tropical Storm Hugo has been upgraded to a hurricane and is expected to impact Jamaica. A hurricane warning is now in effect. Wait! Did you know there are a few steps that have to be taken before a hurricane advisory is issued? Once a tropical cyclone has formed in the Atlantic or the Caribbean, the Met Service monitors it and puts plans in place in the likelihood that the system will affect Jamaica. Hugo. We require additional staff in, especially for the These include increasing the number of technical staff working at the National Meteorological Center and the number of upper air observations daily, and ensuring that the weather and technical equipment in the office are fully functional. They are in constant dialogue with the National Hurricane Center in the United States, which provides regular updates on the system. Once the Met Service does an assessment and determines that the system is a threat to Jamaica, the following will unfold. Yes, Prime Minister Holness. Yes, Evan Thompson here from the Met Service. I'm really just calling to, to update you on the situation with Hurricane Hugo. It continues to move closer to the island and so we believe that it, it will be necessary for us to move to that hurricane warning. Um, so we're just making sure that we have your approval. Then? Hello, yes, hurricane specialist, please. Hi, how are you doing? Evan here again from Jamaica. Right, I have just spoken with the Prime Minister. He's in agreement that we we'll go to the hurricane warning by 5 o'clock this evening. That's correct. The National Hurricane Center publicizes this information internationally and the Met Service prepares and sends bulletins to the local media. And that is how we get here. A hurricane warning is now in effect for the island. And as the country prepares for the weather system, the Met Service continues to play a critical role in the country's disaster readiness, providing information to the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management and the local government ministry. These entities use this information to determine which areas on the island should be evacuated and where shelters should be opened. That's not all. The Met Service also works closely with the Coast Guard to evacuate fishermen at sea, on the keys and banks, before the storm hits. That is how the Met Service keeps Jamaicans in the know so that they can better prepare for any severe weather system. A happy home is a safe home. Here are some quick tips to keep household chemicals out of the reach of children. Tip 1. Clearly label all chemicals and store them in their original containers to avoid confusion. Tip 2. Use child-proof locks on low cabinets and store all chemicals on high shelves or in locked cabinets. Tip 3. Teach your children about the dangers and importance of safety around these products. Few simple steps can make a big difference. Keep your home safe and keep those little hands out of harm's way. Before we end today's show, our last piece of advice to you is self-care. Take it seriously. COVID has taught us many things. And among those is that the, the dynamics of our environment has shifted somewhat in terms of how people think about their, themselves in their natural space. I mean, one of the greatest manifestations of that is the workplace. Uh, the workplace has changed because of COVID. Because Jamaicans, the global citizens, have come to terms with their mortality now so more than any other time in the world. Because COVID, as I said, has been the greatest equalizer known to man during this last hundred years. 
everybody was afraid at some point in time that COVID would have gotten us and would have taken us out. And it never really mattered whether we had money or were poor, whether we were in North America or in Jamaica. And as a human instinct would dictate, many persons are now rethinking how they work, where they work, what time they work, and the concept of self-care and taking care of self, family, community is becoming a lot more relevant. That represents for us an opportunity, particularly because we exist in a pandemic of lifestyle-related ailments. It is how we live that is facilitating our demise to a large extent. The cardiovascular disease, the salts, the sugars, the fats, the tobacco, the alcohol, the lack of rest, the lack of physical activity. We have to get people nudged into greater health-seeking behavior. It cannot just be about cure. It has to be about prevention. And some of it we may have to legislate, like tobacco legislation, like school nutrition policy and what is served in our schools, like sugary drink, our foundation championed that, like the right of people to know what's in their foods, you know, front of package labeling. But the reality is that generally Jamaicans don't like to get a checkup. They got doctor when they're sick. So we, while we single out men, for being a little, you know, afraid. It's better to bear the perception of being violated and detecting your prostate troubles early than to wait until it's too late. And at that stage, the violation don't really matter. So we're going to have to be bold about that and engage in greater community outreach. But I think we have to also advocate for people, Jamaicans, to do their annual screening. Motorists, when driving on the road, here are some simple reminders. Look out for and extend courtesy to all road users. Give plenty of room to pedestrians, especially in wet weather. Drive slowly, no bother wet them up. Slow down when approaching a pedestrian crossing or school and always be prepared to stop. Remember, a school zone is a 30 kilometer zone. Cut your speed. Drivers of large and slow-moving vehicles should always keep in the far left hand of a dual carriageway. Keep it simple. Drive left and pass right. These are just simple reminders of your road duties. Drive safely. This is where we leave you on today's edition of Jamaica Magazine. Be sure to join us tomorrow on this station for all the information you need to know. Until then, visit our website, jis.gov.jm, for this and more offerings. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Twyla Whelan, reminding you to be safe during this hurricane season. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.